Adam Harry here with Stable Abe. Say hi, Abe. Hey, guys. We're here. We're doing a quick overview of the new Pathfinder role-playing game, Ultimate okay. Intrigue. As you can see here, uh, this is a campaign player supplement. DM supplement yeah. all the way. Like, it's just a supplement for the game. Yeah. Uh, there's a ton of new... Uh, uh, Subclasses, I guess. Archetypes. Archetypes. Yeah, things. yeah. Pathfinder has archetypes, and there's a ton of them in here. Holy crap! There's so yeah. many archetypes in here, um, as well as a unique class. Yes, the vigilante. Yes. Yeah. There's a ton of new mechanics in here as well. Uh, there's rules for social dueling, like yeah. like witty witty repertoire, repertoire, blah 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 blah. blah. I got a plus three in my blah 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 checks. Uh, it's actually pretty cool. There's a lot of really cool stuff in here. Uh, lots of magic and everything like that. Also, we got to show the back off here too. So, yep, yep. Um, that guy's got a sword. Definitely, we've all got swords. <laughs> yeah, but this is obviously uh, uh, 3.5 OGL compatible Pathfinder, obviously. So it's from from Paizo. So Man. it's actually a really cool book. It's got a lot of really cool stuff in. So let's go ahead and take a look. First off, let's flip through here. Ultimate Intrigue. Uh, all of the different stuff in the book. We'll go over the table of contents real quick. Um, Abe, you want to go ahead and read some of those? Yeah, so chapter one is going to be your classes. So we've got the unique class, the Vigilante, and then uh, new archetypes. I mean, you know, There's a 60, you know, 60 plus pages of new archetypes. And this book's 256 pages, I believe. Yeah. So for, yeah, 64 um, of those are archetypes. For most of, if not all, I don't know every class that they have, but most of, I guess, the, the core classes yeah. in, in Pathfinder are represented here. Um, then we've got new the, feats. some new feats. And then a big chunk of rules. This is kind of your game master section. Yeah. Um, how you would want to do um, intrigue. This includes like influence duels, um, yep. building influence, heists, pursuits, things like that. And then a section on social combat. So these are all your social combat yes, rules. Yes, verbal duels, social conflicts, yeah. all that fun stuff. And the, then, the interesting thing about this mm -hmm. book really is I, I think... This is a combination of if you've ever wanted to play as a, a an urban crime fighter vigilante, yep. or if you ever wanted to play Game of Thrones yeah. set in the Pathfinder kind of high fantasy realm. Yep. Because uh, you've got your you've got your Batman stuff here, and then you've got your Bruce Wayne stuff here. So, yeah. so it's really interesting like, doing both. Yeah. Ways. If yeah. you if you ever wanted to be uh, Littlefinger or or uh, Varys. Yeah. Or, or old Tyrion. Yep. Or old Tyrion, yeah, him too. Yeah. So this is the book. Uh, oh, then yeah. the, the magic gear stuff, it's yeah. got some cool stuff in Spells there. And gears. Spells and gear. So, so yeah, this, that works great for that kind of thing. Or if you want to do like a Scarlet Pimpernel. Yeah, uh, some that's kind of, of a vibe. Yeah, yeah, some kind of French court intrigue thing yes. uh, with, with maybe some identities. This so so really, if you, if you like the role R-O-L-E part of role playing instead of the yeah. dice role playing, then this is a really good book. It's a really great book for that. Yeah. Yeah. So we're going to dive in, uh, show off a little bit of the Vigilante here. Uh, you're Batman. Can we yep. just say that? Can yeah. that away? You're Batman, yeah. You're Assassin Batman. Maybe or... you're like Azrael, because you got more of the magic going Ooh, on than you're yeah. normal Batman. And you right? probably kill people. You probably kill people. Yeah, yeah. Let's, let's be fair. Yeah. yeah. You got a whip, too. So those, those knives are You could be the Dread, Pri Dread Pirate vig uh, Vigilante. Robert. It's a different book, actually. Yeah, probably. Yeah. I don't know. <laughs> there's no pirates here. No pirates. Uh, no but pirates. there's all the uh, the. It's a standard leveling up tree, basically. And it's yeah. got all the class, like one to one to twenty for the base class, obviously. So and, and then all your of, different uh, rules and everything. He's got a lot of like interrogation and blending in things. Like you know, he's got the everyman special rule. Right. Uh, he gets so he can just turn it anyone because you know he's he's everyone and nobody. He's the man behind them. No one knows who the man behind the mask. He's Nobody kind of knows. Yep. He's got a um, bunch of cool, like you said. Uh, Investigation talents yeah. and um, kind of stealth talents, but not the stealth skill base. Right. I mean, he does have the stealth skill, yeah. but you know what I'm saying. Um, yeah, really cool stuff. And then the other thing that this class has unique is the uh, different personas. Basically, you've got your vigilante persona, and then you've got your your Bruce Wayne, the Batman. Bingo. <laughs> so that's kind of the duality of this of this book in particular. There's yeah. always the subtext of what's going on. So again, if you really like the role play aspect, this book's got a lot of that covered for you. <laughs> yeah, so they got a lot of cool, um, just that kind of like uh, ideas, the man behind the mask for, for all, a lot of the classes. Yes, absolutely. So we're gonna keep flipping through. There's also a ton of stuff. So uh, yeah. each class in the other books has a ton of archetypes 
that you can adopt in this book. Yeah. Uh, we're not gonna go through them all. We're gonna flip through a couple of them we thought were cool. I thought the metaphor, metamorph was kind of neat. Yeah, it's turning like into somebody else. Alchemist that uses magic, her alchemy on herself to, to metamorphize yep. herself. The bard totally fits in with uh, this type of you know oh, yeah. urban environment type of game. Uh, they like to tell stories and sing songs and be the center of attention. Yeah. So all that stuff, the sorrow skull, sor sorrow soul, excuse me. The crow? What? Yeah. <laughs> the cavalier, again, the knightly arch archetypes, they're going to be used to being in big houses and nobles and yep. dealing with all that stuff. So. so you got a couple cool ones like the general of the Hussar and stuff. Uh, druid yep. over here. Yep. They have a, a skin shaper druid archetype, which I thought was cool. So yeah. if you want to... Uh, use the skies to turn into other people. That's, if you want to play that route, you can totally do it. Let's skip ahead. There's, again, each class has got a ton of Inquisitor, a ton of, yeah. Investigator. I thought this one was funny right here. The hallucinist. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Do you want to take some drugs and get that psychedelic perception? Yeah, if you ever want Damn. your character to be a stoner and get powers from that. Um, oh, those druids, you never know. You never, you never yeah, know. Yeah, I guess, I guess somehow that's, um, uh, yeah. that's good in this social setting. And you can also just play someone's major drum well if you want. Right. Why not? Yeah, why not? Mesmerist, there's a ton love, of cool stuff. I love this artwork, by the way. There's yeah. some really cool artwork in this book. Oh, yeah, there's we a lot definitely. of Paizo stuff. I think this is a really cool picture of a, of a, like, of a, a eye creepy eye. <laughs> yeah. Uh, this is more of, of the, what was it? The Mesmerist? Mesmerist, yeah. So we've got the Vizier and the Vox. If you ever wanted to play as Jafar from Aladdin, boom. Boom. Done. <laughs> I'll keep going. There's there's the ranger. This is probably I think <laughs> the one that made us chuckle the most. Yeah. The uh, the dandy the archetype. Dandy, yeah. So the ranger basically. Uh, I feel like it might have been a bit of a stretch, but uh, he's he's a ranger at heart because he hunts for rumors and gossip. Boom. <laughs> Even though he's very different from your normal woodsman. And I mean, yes. To be fair, I would want I would want to play that character. Yeah. <laughs> like let's if, be honest. If if I could play a half orc <laughs> ranger that was. A dandy, the dandy arc. That's, like, like, yeah, I don't know. That'd be pretty cool. Yeah. <laughs> like, like, styling. Like, the, check yeah. that guy out. Check there. this guy out. Yeah. Check that out. That yeah. is, that's, that pretty, is pretty, pretty, that's pretty, that's pretty nice. That is a unique character. I don't even know if that's a half orc. That might just be an orc. That might be a full blown orc yeah. dandy. I don't know. I'm okay with that. You know, yeah. Yeah. If, if I was, if I was running a campaign. And my player was like, hey, I want to play this orc is there, dandy. Is that like, cool? I would make it happen. I would make it happen. Oh, yeah. No, that's yeah. great. So, I mean, there's obviously there's cool fodder for um, fodder for thought and stuff here. Oh, yeah. It, there's a lot of really cool art. Everybody's yeah. got some cool ones. I love how the dandy has the, gets the ability to hobnob better <laughs> <laughs> and to, cra uh, to crash party. You don't need your hunter's bond. Oh, no. Or <laughs> not animal companion. You hobnob, you hobnob my hobnob friend. At party you hobnob. Crash. Party crash. Yeah. Oh, there's a ton of cool stuff, though. There's There's... There's some that are less uh, silly, I guess, than others. Yeah. Um, the, the conciliary. The conciliary, yeah. yeah. The heister. So yeah. I mean, obviously, the rogue is going to have a lot of uh, <laughs> a lot of criminal classes. Yeah, and good stuff in here. Oh yeah, always fun. Oh, oh, you can play as um uh, I want to Michael, be Myers, Myers, right? Michael Myers, right? Michael Myers. Michael Myers. No, it was yeah. Dana. Um, uh, the other guy. Oh, the other guy? Yeah. Uh, I, Dana, I can't remember uh, his name now. But uh, yes. Is he was that good at disguising himself. Yes. I thought he was a different actor the whole time. <laughs> like my, not Austin Powers or Wayne, it right. was Garth. Uh, the guy that okay. played Garth, yeah. Dana Harvey. Dana Harvey, maybe? I, I don't know. I'm sorry if you're watching. <laughs> and you really like that movie. I forgot your last name. I'm, I'm also really sorry if you really like that movie. <laughs> you know. That's a whole other thing. Yeah. Uh, anyway, moving on. There's a ton of. We're gonna. I'm gonna skip through the classes because yeah. you get the idea. There's so many. There's so many here. Other class archetypes. We get to the feats. We're not gonna go through the feats because this is Pathfinder. There's a million. There's feats. a bunch of feats. Yeah. Um, they're all really cool and they're all very centric to intrigue mm -hmm. and being sneaky and social interactions and stuff like that. So you we're not what? gonna do that. One thing I do like about Pathfinder is since it has a slightly more steampunky or modern setting you know it has, more, yeah, it has yeah. more guns it has guns it has guns base yeah. thing um than like say dungeons and dragons which doesn't really have guns involved but right it does lend itself really well i think to this kind of game because you can do kind of like that 17th 18th century french true. Court thing with, true, with, with pistols you know dueling at dawn if your mission goes wrong or something like right that. right um, so I think this is a really great book for that. No, totally. And, like, and, if you, and the system worked well for that. If you want to play those type of games yeah. where it is more court intrigue type stuff, yeah. if that really gets you go going, then totally check out this book. It's got all that stuff. This is the intrigue section we were talking about. Yep. These, This section has a ton of rules. Uh, it talks about the different intrigue systems. Um, the heists, the influence, yeah. just a ton of extra stuff. You don't have to use this for every game, but again, if you've ever wanted to play in that setting, you know, 
get involved in the game of nobles. <laughs> game of nobles yeah. that don't sit. Do they sit on? Do nobles sit on thrones? No, or they sit on well, not really. Fancy chairs. Fancy chairs. Yeah. The game of fancy chairs. Yeah. <laughs> There's also the criminal element too, uh, and, and all that kind of faction play. Um, where was the rules. part I wanted to get to was the verbal duels. I think that was uh, that's on. in the next chapter. Okay. Yeah. Would you get the idea that there's spies, butler, how to play that up? Yeah. It's kind of really great stuff. The heists, how this works. And this is forgeries, a big thing. Forgeries, yeah. Uh, and this is really, uh, I would say this is more aimed at the DM, and the, yeah. the game master uh, in some ways, and the players, even though players can get useful things out of this. A lot of this, I mean, this is like designing a heist. And, yeah. And that kind Which of can thing. be really fun, actually. Oh, yeah, definitely. If uh, uh, you want to challenge your players to come up with a plan to, I don't know, yeah. rob a dragon's vault. I would, I would definitely... Um, the important thing with a book like this also is just, you know, let your players know you're using it like when you start the campaign. Yes. I wouldn't spring this halfway through. They're not gonna, they're not gonna have the skill set needed for it. That kind of yeah, thing. Yeah, that's kind of weird to um, just be like, you thought you were going dungeon crawling, yeah. but you're actually going court crawling or party uh, hopping. I mean, some of these things, like a heist or something, if you if you made sure the party had the right skill set, you might be able to, to to slip that into a game. But mm -hmm. this this book, I think, really kind of cries out to have a game built around it and around oh, yeah. the ideas. I mean, it's it's called ultimate intrigue, right. so not, this isn't something not to like be sideshow afterthought. Intrigue. Yeah. There's also the idea of a of nemesis 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 yeah, it's cool. of the of the uh, characters or or a character in the party or the whole party yeah um, and how they kind of um, can be used to prod the story for it let's say right so that's kind of cool because they will be working actively against the party uh, it's always good to have a good bad guy I think yeah I think the best stories have the best bad guys absolutely if and they I mean, have a weak bad guy it's just not as good not as good and I mean obviously a, a nemesis is great in either you know kind of your intrigue game it can be a, you know a little finger to your Varus or whatever yep. or it's a great um, you know super villain almost to your to your vigilante here yeah because like what's the point if you're the best you know court guy yeah. wherever if you don't have anybody challenging you then how do you know you're the best I absolutely it's just kind of kind of boring to walk into the conversation you know, yeah. I have a plus 20 to my check, whatever, I pass everything. It's, yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so that's, that's the, uh, again, mastering intrigue part yeah. of it. We're going to skip ahead. There's a ton of stuff a in this chapter. Rules. There's the social combat rules. Yes. These are interesting and different. Yeah. So um, <laughs> Not all fights are resolved resolve with blades. Right. And some games, um, like Exalted, for instance, all the World of Darkness games, um, do have that social combat mm -hmm. really built into the core structure of the game. The D and D and Pathfinder, 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 uh, I like Pathfinder. it. Pathfinder, <laughs> Pathfinder, Pathfinder. That social yeah. conflict right there. Yeah, but um, D and yeah, yeah, D and D and Pathfinder don't do that as much. So it's really cool to have them put out a nice set of rules that if you want to do a more social conflict thing, if you want to have, as we'll show, uh, as, as Adam was talking about, verbal duels and stuff like that. Yes. Um, and I do also like that they, they do recognize that this is kind of going to be a, a lot of discussions are kind of a free form thing. Mm -hmm. It's not going to not gonna work like a combat as much. So they have kind of some just kind of free form DC. So if you need to make uh, checks but for some kind of check, they have kind of free form ideas behind that. Maybe some ideas if you want to use initiative or not. Yeah. Uh, this is a little this is a little looser based um, to give you more of a framework, but obviously anything that's social based that has a lot of talking is, is going to by means be a little bit more. Um, yeah. What, what's what's interesting about levels, these? Yeah, yeah. you've got to have that free form because um, I, I think as the DM you have to make that call or whether or not uh, a role is let's say justified right. or it's warranted. If the player says something really witty and cool, just let them pass that check because yeah. it was witty and cool. But if they say something witty and cool and roll like a two on the check and completely fail, right? That's not cool. That's like not fun for right. the players. It's well, like, and they also got they've got this little section. Which yes. is basically what you were saying is it's the failing forward. It's basically the, anytime the players do something, itch, and this is good advice for any kind of absolutely, game, but especially for these kind of conversation games. I think it's basically the players should always be moving the story forward. Yeah. If you fail that check, even if you said something really cool. You still you still move this plot forward. Conversely, it, you might just piss someone off or something. Exactly. Yeah. Conversely, if you say something, if the player says something really stupid, yeah, then you can have and they they roll awesome. Yeah, then you can still have them fail forward. Exactly. Like yeah, you made the king really mad with that comment, but he does, uh, he does see the value. Right. So he's gonna send you on that mission still, <laughs> but no <He> reward. Just, <laughs> but he may not have a reward or support. Yeah. Exactly. Versus like if you had said something cool and rolled well. He might actually send some guards to help you, or you know, something like that. Right. 
you know, you might get a trip to the vault before you go, but now you, you pissed him off. He's like, no, you're on your own, but yeah. You're on your own. I'm not gonna kill you, but that's the big thing they, they mentioned in here. Don't don't have a, uh, basically like a critical failure, just kill the entire party right. for a social mishap, you Ooh, know. Ooh, use the wrong fork. Yeah. Off with their heads. <laughs> He used the inner fork for first. Uh, oh, he uh, didn't kill them, kill them all. Yeah, that's kind of a dumb uh, thing, but verbal duels. Yeah. This is a thing. <laughs> uh, we're not gonna get into how to do it all. No. I just wanted to call it out that it's actually in the book. Eh. And I mean, it can it can take the form of a, you know, this is a, there's trials and things like that, mm. or it can be a, When would a player ever get arrested and thrown in jail and have a trial? When I can't imagine. I can't players, imagine. Players are very, are very law-abiding. Yeah, right? they never have bar no. fights in jail. Bar fights? Oh, oh, no. I've never started yeah. a campaign off with a party just immediately getting into a bar fight and getting thrown in jail. Yeah. And then getting forced to save the city. Who, that never happens. Who does that? That's what yeah, that's good. That's I mean, on the other hand, it'd be kind of funny if you did that and then they're like, well, I'm playing the verbal do with this. I, <laughs> I use the legal system to get me out of jail. Campaign over, sir. Ooh, congratulations, you've won. Let's roll up some new characters. <laughs> save the world. That seems like a violation of inalienable rights. I think I think we're going to we're gonna pursue a legal recourse. Objection. <laughs> Sustained. Oh. Yeah. So it's, yeah. That's kind of cool. Um, not going to get into all the dual rules. Again, cool art. I just wanted to point out yeah. that the verbal duels are a thing. And they've got rules for multi-directional duels, team duels, all, you know, any kind of verbal duel you could want. Yeah, yeah. it's kind of nuts. So if you ever wanted to role play uh, your high school debate team and Bingo. see what would have happened if you had won instead of lost and then not got into the What's college that, you wanted, uh, and then your whole life was ruined afterwards. That never happened. No one's, no one's bitter about this. <laughs> <laughs> Moving on. <laughs> What was that gay, uh, uh, Professor, not the Professor Layton, the, uh, the objection, you know, the, the, uh, the Ace, Ace Attorney, Ace Attorney, Attorney yes, if you've ever wanted to play an yeah. Ace Attorney game. <laughs> exactly. Uh, anyway, we're, we're going to move on. Uh, the last couple sections are spells. So, uh, also, you know, the spells also help you, um use the rules to be a better lawyer rather than being a lawyer to get better rules. Bingo. Right? Yeah, it's there you go. difference in this book. Yes. So, more Magnus, <laughs> Magnus spells. More <laughs> spells for pretty much any spell, ca spell yeah. casting class. Uh, we're not going to go through all those. There's um, a bunch of them. There's a bunch of them. You can kiss a pig if you want. Yep. I, I guess. Turn into a princess? Uh, I don't know. Yeah, moving on. <laughs> Tons of spells. Tons of... Lots of spells, or more spells. Kiss women. Kiss a viper. Kiss, That's... There's lots of kissing in there. Oh, I guess yeah. that makes sense. It kiss is interesting. Ghost, yeah. <laughs> okay, the last section we're going to cover here is the gear and magic items. And I would say that this is pretty clearly a picture of what happens when your ancient goes wrong. Yeah. Because everyone's on fire and someone's getting sacrificed to a dark god. And that's normally not what happens when your ancient goes right. Yeah. Yeah. Or maybe you incited a riot. I don't know. Maybe. I don't know. Anyway. <laughs> Um, cool artwork. Yeah. Lots of really cool sneaky items in this yep. one. Uh, as you might expect, you've got things like uh, switch blades, the spring yep. blade, yep. wrist got launcher if you want to shoot, yeah. knock out darts at your, your targets. Uh, we've got the hollowed book. Yeah. Which... Hollow book. Not hollowed. Oh, it's hollow. Yeah. It's hollowed out. It's hollowed out, right. Yeah. The hollow book has been hollowed out. That's right. what I was going okay, with. Okay, okay. Yeah, sorry, sorry. Uh, but there's a bunch of bunch of crazy stuff here. Yeah. Poison lip paint. I like, I like how these are concealable thieves tools, and that kind of assumes that normal thieves tools aren't concealable. Like <laughs> well, everyone else is just going around with these giant bags of thief tools, and everyone's like, "What's your profession? I don't, I don't know. I don't, <laughs> What's your profession? Yeah, I don't know. I, I, you know not, not, not a thief. I'm clearly not a thief. They have some cool stuff. I like the uh, accuracy lozenge. Yeah. That lets your second attack bonus be as good as your, your first. first. Yeah, it's kind of kind of kind of handy. Scroll belt. Yeah. Come on. Um, some of these are silly, some of these are pretty cool, actually. Uh, intuition serum? <laughs> Fellowship film. It's a, it's a breath mint, basically. It's like you one get of those... D4 uses. Yeah, you eat it, and uh, you're better at talking. Because clearly, because it's uh, you got you got better breath. Yeah. yeah. Uh, <laughs> There's some real-world applications to this stuff. Yeah. Um, where was the silly, the, the bow? That was one of the things. Oh, yeah. And what's, one thing that is cool that they just talk about in this book a bit, was, especially with some of the magic items and the magic spells, is is defeating other magic abilities. Yes. Because obviously in most of these settings, there's a lot of items or, or spells that are like zones of truth. Yeah, or, like what's the point of intrigue if you can just cast zone of truth yeah, and make sure speak with discern dead, lies. Stuff like that, yeah. So there are a lot of these... Um, 
abilities and spells are getting past that kind of thing. Yeah. So it's it's kind of a magical way to circumvent magic. Yeah. Which is kind of funny. We were looking at the Silent Century cross crossbow earlier. It's it's kind of silly. Yeah. Um, it's infinite ammo, so endless ammunition. Excuse yes. me. Yes. Plus two. Plus two. Um, but uh, it's better at sniping. It is. It, it does. It reduces the penalty imposed by sniping by five, which yeah. is cool. Um, but uh, it can also shoot. Uh, you ever watch Green Arrow <laughs> or Arrow? Excuse me. Yeah. Arrow. Yeah. You know how you like just randomly has like the bow. He just pulls it out and shoots it, and like it's got a like a you know zip line. Two, on zip line it. all of a sudden. Yeah. That's does your, it, that, that does it. it does it. Yeah. <laughs> your zip line generator. So, so yeah, this is this is a. Uh, it's not really a sentry though. I mean, I guess maybe like the sentry class uses it or something, yeah. but um, it, it's, the, it's Green Arrow's bow. It's like, pr pretty much is. It's not. Yeah. yeah. It's not straight on, but it. Yeah. It's, it's a very, it's a crossbow, not a compound bow. Yeah. But you get the idea. Anyway, there's a ton of really fun magic yeah. items in here. Um, panel flirting. <laughs> <laughs> you never know. You never know. You never, <laughs> gloves of unexpected <laughs> violence. <laughs> well, you never know when you there might be unexpected violence, right? There you go. <laughs> But that's that's pretty much it in this book. There's there's also obviously the index. It's it's actually kind of neat. It's a cool book. Uh, yeah. Pathfinder puts out a lot of books. Obviously, some of them are lighter than others. This is actually a pretty dense book, I would say. Oh yeah. Um, I wouldn't necessarily get it. The class stuff you could probably use in any in any game. So if you're interested yeah. in that, that's a good thing to get to work into it. But definitely, if you want to play our intrigue kind of base game or absolutely where you're all, intrigue, yeah, game. your nobles or or some kind of uh, medieval superhero game. Oh, because uh, of the dual persona thing. Because of the thing. dual persona yeah. stuff. Uh, this would be a really great book for that kind of thing. Absolutely. To base your campaign around. Uh, Just let your players know up front. Right, yeah. And maybe if your players bring it to you, talk with them about what they're trying to accomplish. And, Absolutely. And work it out. Because it's, it's a, it, above the table, it's a social contract thing. Yeah. And you want to make sure everybody's on the same page for that. Absolutely. But this is definitely one of the more rules-heavy uh yeah. Supplements, I would say it's not. There's not like modules or mi or camp or missions. There's not a campaign there. in here. There's not even any new monsters. It's all yeah stuff you would use, direct rules that you would use and play your game, which is actually really cool. That's kind of how I like my supplements a lot. Yeah. So gives you the options and opens up the toolbox for you to create whatever kind of yeah. adventure you want. So anyway, that's pretty much for it for this overview. We uh, we talked quite a bit about it. It seems cool. It seems kind of silly, but also can be very serious. Yeah. So uh, very fun game. Uh, Ultimate Intrigue, or very fun supplement, excuse me, for Pathfinder, or any 3.5 type of game you want to run. So Absolutely. Yeah. Go check it out. It's in stores now. It's available online, too, from Paizo. Uh, I'm Adam here from Bell Essels. I'm Batman. I'm Batman. I'm, I'm stable. <laughs> <laughs> He's Batman now. All right, y'all have a good one. <laughs>